Today I fucked up by going on vacation with my best friend's family. In 2014 I was 19 and went on a summer trip with my best friend and his family to his grandparents beach house for a week. While there, his mom asked him to take some photos of his younger siblings playing at the beach. So he did. That night, him and I were sitting with his mother and grandmother in the kitchen and they asked to see the photos. They were scrolling through his photos on his phone and were adoring seeing the kids playing in the ocean, building sand castles, etc. When suddenly they looked at my friend in disgust and shouted an om, why do you have a picture of your girlfriend's hairy vagina? That's disgusting. He swore he didn't have a picture of that and that he had no idea what they were talking about and he and his mom began arguing, as his grandmother had been forced to see it. At this point I felt extremely uncomfortable and wanted to get up and leave but didn't know how to exit the situation. After quickly getting sick of him denying what they were clearly looking at, they showed him the photo. He suddenly perks up a bit and says oh, that's not my girlfriend's vagina, that's his butthole pointing at me. At this point, I remembered that a week before, I had drunkenly sent him a close-up photo of my hairy butthole as a joke to gross him out. I'd quite teenage boy stuff, that's just how my group of friends was I guess. I think he had sent me a poop pic and I retaliated with this. Photo had automatically saved to his phone, happens with things like WhatsApp, and was the last photo saved before the ones of his siblings playing on the beach. In the end they found it pretty funny even though they thought it was weird AF. It was by far the most awkward moment of my life. I had a lot of difficulty looking his grandma in the eye the rest of the week. Too long didn't read, drunkenly sent my best friend a close-up picture of my butthole as a joke and then his mother and grandmother saw it while sitting directly across from me at the table during their family vacation. Edit, obviously in that situation situation they immediately looked away so they didn't get a good look at what it actually was or closely examine it lol they saw it for a split second and assumed the most logical thing. Setting aside what others have said about two women not knowing the difference between a butthole and vagina. They were upset and scolding him over a picture of what they thought was his girlfriend's vagina. But were all lol nice when they found out it was your butthole? I think it was partly BC they knew it was an accident slash joke and also BC they hated her and loved me. So two women are disgusted and offended to see a vagina, but oh no wait it's just a guy's butthole, funny ha 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 ha. I literally do not understand society. I'm most concerned about two grown women not recognizing the differences between a vagina and a butthole. I am once again reminded how thankful I am that I grew up in a time before camera phones. Yeah that's more or less what his grandma said too. Automatically saved to his phone, right, winking face, meh fapped to that shit. Today I fucked up by falling asleep when my best friend and his gf were at my house. One relaxing summer night, many years ago, I was spending time with my at the time gf, as well as my best friend and his at the time gf. We were all teenagers at the time, when you could still buy swishers at 18. We watched movies in my room, I still lived with my parents so we were being fairly quiet. My gf was getting sleepy so I took her home, this was probably around 2am. I left my friends at my house and took her home. No issues. I arrived back at my house and returned to my room to watch movies with my friends. At some point around 3am, I myself proceed to conk the fuck out. I have sufficiently fallen asleep sitting on my bed, slightly upright against the wall. My best friend and his gf are still there, right next to me on my bed. Sometime later, I am awoke by my mom who woke up and came to check on us, which was fairly uncommon and in retrospect, hilarious. My poor conservative mom had opened my door to see my best friend sucking on his gf's tits like they were made of jolly ranchers. My friends furiously made an attempt to cover up, and my mom started saying my name to wake me up. Well, I woke up, no idea what had happened, seeing my friends with faces as if they had seen ghosts, 
and my mom equally petrified. My friends promptly left, saying nothing, and my mom went back to sleep, also saying nothing. Some time later, my best friend told me what happened that night. I will never forget, and I'm sure neither will my mom. Too long didn't read, my best friend was sucking on his GF's mommy milkers while I was asleep next to them. My mom walks in and sees something she will never forget. The phrasing at the beginning made it seem like a much sadder story. All were lucky they didn't do more than they did. Don't think my friend would be so bold with me on the same bed. If we were both cool with that our college experience would have gone a bit different. Being that we lived in the same apartment for a couple years. As long as he wasn't sucking your tits. Not even American, but Jolly Ranchers killed me. I dunno, I got PTSD from the Jolly Rancher story. When my wife and I were dating we started going at it missionary in my bedroom. My mom came barging in, I got the covers over us just in time. She said where's Amanda? I replied, under me. She walked back out pretty fast. Yeah, kinda wish my mom had just shut the door and walked away instead of stand in the doorway trying to wake me. A much better story to tell in the future than her walking in on you and your GF. Brilliant story. A kept anticipating Ops mess up which never came, much like the GF. Today I fucked up by accidentally buying a semi-tractor. I work for a large company that builds roads. Due to this, we have many, many trucks. Everything from compact pickups to dump trucks to 18-wheelers. This is a story about the last category. So, as our trucks age, it's easier to buy new ones than to keep the old ones fixed. Some of the older trucks live in semi-retirement, punfully intended, as yard vehicles, used for personal transportation around the plant or to pull trailers around. Once they're really worn out, we auction them off to employees. Each truck has its own number, and each auction has its own lot number, because sometimes the trucks come with accessories. The truck numbers do not match the auction numbers. This is important. An old three-quarters ton diesel pickup was being auctioned off at the same time as several other vehicles, including a couple semi-tractors. You might ask why I want a worn-out pickup, and the answer is I'm a redneck. Plus the Cummins engine was still good and can sell for up to $3,000 in my area. This truck's number was 206. Auctions are by silent bid. You put a sealed envelope into a collection box, with the lot number, amount you're willing to pay, and your name. So something like Jeep Saint Chaos bids $500 on lot number 206, which is exactly what I put down. Any other time, it wouldn't have been an issue. Oh he meant truck 206 which is lot number 36. We had sold a lot of trucks that year. Lot numbers were high. Guess what lot 206 was? Yup. A 1993 Kenworth. My boss pulled me aside a week later. Hey Jeep Saint Chaos, you won an auction. Go down to the shop and pay for it. Yay me. I got the pickup I wanted. No, no. Oh god what have I done? Sitting there waiting for me was a beat up old Kenworth. An entire semi-tractor, with an excessive number of gears, an engine larger than my entire car, and enough power to move 100,000 pounds without blinking, got 6 miles to the gallon and blew enough smoke to single-handedly cause global warming. Explaining the situation didn't help. Sir, you bid on it. Here's the paper you signed. It's all yours. Could I have made a stink and backed out? Maybe. But I would have been disqualified from further auctions, I would have dishonored myself, and I could afford the $500. Whatever. Totally my fault. I was saved by a co-worker though, who actually wanted the thing for his farm. He paid me $600, which gave me a neat little profit on my learning experience. TL, doctor mixed up auction number and truck number and accidentally bought an 18-wheeler. Sold it for a profit within an hour. Never tried to drive it. I don't see it today I fucked up here. You made a 20% ROI within an hour. That's a win in my book. Unfortunately, my name is on the title. This truck shouldn't ever see the road again, but I am legally required to title it in my name. Depending on my co-worker and the titling fees, I may end up owing far more than that $100 to get it out of my life. After he completes his inspection and decides what to do with it, I'll find out if I have to title it and pay taxes.
If being stoked on a running 12V Cummins for $500 makes you a redneck, I might be a redneck. Sadly, it sold for about $2,000. The rest of the truck was junk including the trans. I'll get the next one, hopefully. But actually, what's a 93 Kenworth worth? I would imagine much more than $500 in scrap value alone. I have no idea, nor do I have anywhere to store it or a license to drive it. You're probably correct though. I'm just amazed that you can buy a semi, in any condition, for only $500. I'd almost buy one just to say that I own one. I find it hard to believe. If I could buy a running semi for $500 I would buy 10 of them.